Hey guys, it's Mark Holthy here coming to you live from Lake Louise, Alberta. This is a little bit unorthodox because I have not been able to find anywhere where I can do this live stream, but it's actually going to be on my data. So this is going to be an expensive live stream, but I didn't want to miss it for everyone. So we'll wait a few minutes for people to connect in and it's going to be a little bit shorter than it normally is, but we're going to do the best we can with what we've got here. Um, I'm hoping that the uh, connection that I have here is good, but this is, um, I'm in beautiful Lake Louise, Alberta here um, at the Lake Louise Inn, and this is a place my family and I like to stay. Well, we'll see here. Hopefully, it looks like we've got a few people that are tuning in here. This is not going to be as fancy. The feed that we have for this is not going to be as good, but that's all right. Oh, excellent. We do have a few people here. Okay, this is nice. <laughs> we, okay, we can do this. This will work. This will work. So hello, post in the comments below where you're listening from and uh, we'll do a few introductions and then we'll jump right into some live Q&As. I'm away with my family and um, but I wanted to try to get uh, this live stream in because I'm going to be away next week. Maybe next week I can do it too. But right now, um, we're just in Lake Louise, Alberta, which is about a four-hour drive from my home, but it's right nestled in the mountains, and it's beautiful here. We're going to do a nice hike in the afternoon, but uh, I wanted to not leave you guys hanging because there was a couple in July where I wasn't able to do a live stream. So we'll do what we can here, and we'll go from there. All right, let's see what we've got here for people. And uh, this is definitely, I'm just doing it off of my, my laptop here. So let's see what we've got. So we've got uh, Amir Abbas uh, from Toronto. And I gotta tell you guys something just awesome. Um, I, was, um, I was just getting out of my room here, um, coming out looking for a place to do the live stream, and one of the room attendants recognized me. And uh, let me just see if I can remember his name here. I wrote it down so I could give him a shout out. Let's see here. Seifel, it was Seifel. S-A-I-F-A-L. So big shout out to Seifel who's working here at Lake Louise Inn who just went through the TR to PR pathway and he's waiting for his confirmation of permanent residence. I'd have him join me, but he's working right now. So it was kind of cool to have someone recognize you when you, uh, you know, came out of your room. It was, it was really neat. So it's nice to know that these videos are being watched by people right close to home as well as all of you all over the world. So let's keep going down here, see what we have here. Yes, we in Montreal. Um, this is a great, uh, let's see here. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not an officer. I would be the immigration lawyer. Okay, Ramesh is from Toronto. Good to see you, Ramesh. Hamam is in Winnipeg. Um, and uh, the immigration company's in Brampton. Welcome. It's going awesome, Dan. Uh, yes, Banff is awesome. Um, oh, Aswan is in Banff. Very cool. Yes, we're just up a little bit further up the road here in Lake Louise. And uh, good to see you, Ralph, as always. And we've got Harjots over in, uh, if I can get this, in Brandon, Manitoba. Excellent. Good to see you again, Harjot. Um, <laughs> he says, if, I think is what he's going to say here is if he sees me, he will say hi. And that would be awesome. Thank you so much, Yerubas. Okay, and Farzad's over in Saskatoon. And uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, Hitesh is over North Battleford, North Battleford, Saskatchewan. And uh, Ahmet is in Virginia. Good to see you as always. Um, <laughs> James says he's, he's from Goa, India. Happy to hear your long time was a bit busy. Sorry. No problem. No problem. We've got Algeria Nourish over in Algeria. This is so cool to see where you guys are, are at. Yes, happy hiking. We're going to go to the tea house today that is up above uh, the Chateau Lake Louise. We're going to go on a little bit of a hike there today. That's where we're headed to. Um, Joe, good to see you in Arizona. I hope you guys are doing good down in the States. We're hoping that this border is going to open up for us Canadians to go down south now that the Americans can come up here. Feroz is over in Pakistan. Good to see you, Feroz. Uh, Simi's in Bahrain. Um, Fatunia. Uh, not sure where you're from, Fatunia, but uh, you'll have to give us a, a, a little comment there and let us know. Uh, MK Shapla is in Bangladesh. This is great. I love this connection. Um, yeah, it is. It is much more casual. And ironically, it is cooler <laughs> right now. Let's see what temperature it is right now. This is the extent that I go to do live streams for you guys. 
and I think you guys can probably hear me okay. Let's see here. The temperature right now is, wow, it's four degrees Celsius here. So it doesn't feel like that, but it's four degrees. It's supposed to get up to about 18 degrees in the afternoon. And that's where we're gonna do most of our hiking. Um, but it is four degrees. I wonder if you can see my breath. <sighs> no, I don't think you can, <laughs> but it is cooler. It's cooler and cooler both ways. All right, let's see here. Okay, Froze is already asking, send me your number. Let's just close out a few things here and I'm gonna show you, I think I can still do this. It's really tricky because I have a, um, I've got a different interface here so I can't, um, yeah, it's not as easy to flip screens around and things like that. Let's see if this one works, if I can do this. I'm not even sure. Let's see, click on that one. Okay, there we go. Well, it's kind of goofy, but it'll work. Um, so this right here is, uh, let's see if I can shrink this down. I think everybody can see this. Yeah, they can. It's not perfect. Nothing like trying to sort things out on the fly here, but let's see. Okay, so there's that. So that's that. And then anybody, and, and, and right in the comments below, you'll be able to see. Um, Igor just has just revamped our website. So we've got a brand new website here. But right at the top, you can see right here, speak to a lawyer. That's where you're going to go to... Um, yeah, to, to connect in and, uh, and book a consult. And whenever we have someone who um, is looking to reach out to us or has questions and they're just not sure, um, the best place to do it is just to go right over to that website and book a consult. Now, um, in, and there's links below where you can do that. Um, I would ring the triangle. It's so much harder because I've got this little uh, stream deck that I used to flip back and forth between screens. So I think we're gonna keep this a little bit more simple. All right, so good to see you for us. And yeah, if you want to reach out, the best ways to book a consult, and I'd, I'd love to connect you with um, with you and uh, or one of my lawyers as well. So, okay, so we've got Vivesh, uh, Vishbesh over in Ottawa. Good to see you. Priscilla's in Boston. Uh, see if we can pull up Priscilla. There she is. Which it's great to see people tuning in from the U.S. as well. And uh, Hitesh says he's got a temporary application number for tier to PR. So how much time can I expect AOR? <laughs> Good luck. I cannot answer that. I have to assume that you are going to see something pretty quick, my friend. Okay, let's see here. We've got uh, Kushal's over in Regina, Saskatchewan. Excellent. And uh, thanks, Garof. I appreciate the, the, the positive feedback. So he said, blessed to watch your video. It helped me a lot. Thank you. And that's what, um, that's what my... Uh, my um, Let's just see here. I'll go back in here. I keep forgetting Seifel. That's what Seifel had said that uh, that the videos had really helped him as well. But it was so cool. I literally just walked out my door, and uh, and um, he was working uh, here on at Lake Louise uh, at the Lake Louise Inn. And um, yeah, he he uh, he he recognized me instantly. So that was really cool. I thought that was awesome. Okay, things are going awesome here, SK. Um, <laughs> well, okay, I, I am simple, absolutely. Enormously smart, eh, I think people could debate that. But I definitely love to share whatever knowledge I have. Um, yes, yes, Syed says they just opened the OINP graduate stream. Yes, they did. And this is something I never get involved with because it's full before it's even opened hardly. And it just wouldn't be fair for me to book a, you know, to get a whole bunch of clients who were waiting for me to submit a, an ONP graduate stream, well, it's the same reason I only took one client for the TR to PR pathway. You know, why do you do this if, um, if you're going to prejudice some clients because you're going to choose one over another? Never like to do that. All right, family is awesome, Himanshu. Himanshu. My son Connor is getting ready to go serve his mission down in Chile, hoping the borders will open, hoping he'll be able to do that. And uh, he gets ready um, to, to, uh, to start his training September the 27th. And myself, my wife, my two older children have all served missions. And it's a wonderful opportunity to go abroad and serve and just, you know, just forget about yourself and think about others and, and just do what you can to make the world a better place. So I'm so proud of Connor and his, his desire to follow in, in all the rest of his family's footsteps. And I'll be honest, a larger reason why I'm doing what I'm doing right now is because of the experience I had in Portugal serving a mission for, for my church. And it's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And young men, when you turn the age of 18, 19, and, 
and young women right around that, that age as well, um, you can go serve a mission for the church. So they call you to wherever they need you in the world, and you could literally go anywhere, at least before the pandemic. Um, and we're hoping things will open up so that uh, our young um, our young men and young women will be able to, to go and serve all over. So, all right. And yes, that is one of the reasons why I, I'm wired the way I am. You know, I am a person who believes in God. I believe that I have a Savior who loves me and uh, that my responsibility and duty to my fellow men is to give, to help, to share, and, um, and to do my part to make this part of the world just a little bit better. The good Lord knows the, the calamities that are happening in the world. My heart goes out to those in Haiti who, who are suffering. My heart goes out to those in Afghanistan and just the mess that's all over the world. And to have at least my faith that grounds me, that helps me to know that I truly am someone who, val- who, who, who has worth and that every single person on this earth has worth. That's what drives me. That's what makes me want to do this. And to see people here, even when I'm on vacation, um, who recognize me and appreciate what I'm doing, it just makes it all worthwhile. So thank you. All right. Let's keep zipping down here. Um, this is awesome. Yes, Way, when you start the Q&A, try to be direct so you win time and answer more. Nope, I'm not going to do that, Yes, Way. The reality is it's important to recognize people, and it's also important for you to realize that normally people pay for these answers. And if you're looking for free advice, then you have to take what is given. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to pull your com- comment up. And there's lots of people who just want to get the answer and they want to move on, and that's totally fine. But that's not. Um, but I'm not going to gear the live stream around just answering questions because I need people to know who I am. I need people to understand where I where I'm coming from. I need them to understand that I am a person just like them, and that I might be an immigration lawyer. I might currently be serving as the national chair of the Canadian Bar Association. But at the end of the day, I'm a person just like them, and I'm not just someone who is just here to spew out answers and uh, but I'm also here to recognize people and to celebrate successes to talk about changes with immigration and to give the most help that I can to the most people and individuals yes way if you're looking for answers and you you're not getting them because we run out of time then that's where you'll go back over here to my website and book a, a, a consultation and uh, just click on speak to a lawyer and you can jump right in there and in a 25 minute consult, I can guarantee that I'll answer all of your questions. And that's how I provide for myself, right? That's how I support my, my family and my kids going to school. That's how I support my mother who's elderly and a widow and my brothers who haven't been as blessed as I am. So um, yeah, there you go. Okay, where is the lake, says, <laughs> um, says Nuri. The lake is by Lake Louise, Alberta. So if you search Lake Louise, Alberta, and then search Tea House, we're going to go hike up to the Tea House, and uh, it's going to be awesome. And it's about, uh, I think, round trip, it's probably about a five-hour trip hiking. So, awesome. Okay, SK's over in Chandigarh. Thesura, good to see you. Thesura is a lifetime, long-standing uh, supporter. He's taken a bunch of my courses already, and Thesura, it's great to see you, my friend. Okay, I think we're just about ready. Um, Pristine's Kerala, we've got a really good group of people that are tuned in. So now what I want to do is um, I want to jump and I'll, now I'll just flip and I'll start answering questions. Remember to put a cue in front of your question and then I'll know that, that, is, um, that it's a question and it's not just, um, uh, just a comment that you're, that you're making, okay? Lima, Peru, great Alva, good to see you. And uh, oh, Saiful! <laughs> Ah, there. Uh, let me click on here. There you go. There's Seifel, Shoel. Hey, Mark, this is Seifel from Lake Louise Inn. Oh, look at that. He, he snuck away to, to connect on the phone. So, so good to have you. There's Seifel. He's right here with me here. And maybe if he walks behind, he can kind of give a wave as he's walking behind. That would be awesome. Great to, great to have you connected. Okay. Wow. Driving from Boston to Quebec, Prius. That's great. Okay. And Punjab and South Africa. And George is over in Halifax. Good to see you, George. Another long, long standing follower and former class um, attendee. And I also want to let you guys know uh, one other thing as we jump into the questions here. 
Um, if you go over here and you click on the link below, you can register. The next Express Entry course and masterclass that's led by me will uh, will start um, in in June uh, in September. So as soon as I come back, I'm going to get my office all organized again, and then I'm going to come right back in, and we're going to answer. Uh, and, and basically, I'm going to the, the step by step course is awesome in and of itself. But when you add together all of the other um, uh, hours of masterclass where I guide all of the students myself in a private Facebook group. Uh, that's what makes this all worthwhile. So go down here, reserve your spot, and um, and come and join me. That would be awesome. Okay, it is now officially time. So I know there's a bunch of people have posted a lot of other questions, and um, <laughs> you're very welcome, Froze, for saying your name. Okay, but I'm gonna j I'm gonna slip to the bottom here now, and I know there's a lot of people. Um, who have already started to post question, post uh, post questions. So we'll start here. And remember, anything that is specific to you and doesn't benefit everybody, I'm going to skip through that because this really needs the the time that I have to share needs to really focus on um, individuals uh, who have questions that benefit more than just them. So if it's a specific question, I'll direct you. I'll typically what I'll do is I'll ring that bell and I'll say click on the link below and book a consult with one of the lawyers in our firm. And, um, and that's the best way to get specific questions answered. Okay. Um, okay, so here we'll, we'll pull up uh, Zhao here. My visa from my study permit expired. So as the, so as has the study permit, I have a valid work permit and I've applied the new visa under the work permit yet approved. Can I use the expired visa to go to the U.S. and come back? There is a contiguous country provision that allows you to go to the U.S. and circle back. But Zhao, there's a lot going on here. And I want you to, um, I highly recommend that you book a consult so that we can sort this out. I never, ever tell people to leave and re-enter Canada unless um, we've had a very, very detailed conversation because there may be things that are missing. So Zhao, you said, um, can I use that expired visa to go back to the U.S. and, and then come back to Canada? Um, my friend, you need to book a consult. This is one of those, um, those questions that I need to get all the details Otherwise, I don't want to give you the wrong information, okay? But is there a provision that allows someone on an expired visa to travel to the U.S. and come back in, into Canada? Yes, there is. But, um, but in your situation, I just don't want to take the chance of giving you, uh, uh, missing something because I don't understand the full picture, okay? Okay. Um, okay, so we've got a lot of people, and I'll answer Vespesh's question as well. Understand that every person is has a different... Um, you know, has a different officer processing their application. Some are faster than others. Sometimes uh, individuals, officers, will have a batch of, of files that they're working through and they will be able to get through them quicker than others. So don't lose any sleep over what time you filed and the fact that you've got a friend who submitted after you and has now got their AOR before you. Don't stress over it, my friends. We have seen very clearly that immigration has not been refusing um, immigration applications for the tier-to-peer -peer pathway in mass. They have actually been very, very facilitative in sending out letters, um, uh, procedural fairness letters, we call them PFLs, um, or request letters. Uh, when there are deficiencies, I've been very, very happy to see uh, IRCC be much more forgiving than they are in the cruel world of express entry. And that's why I do the course, is to help you guys to make sure you're not making those little, small, tiny mistakes that can cost you your future of applying to immigrate to Canada. And it's literally that. We don't know when they're going to finish the CEC draws. And if I go in right now, I'm just going to do a quick little thing and see. I, IRCC, it's a little bit awkward here trying to type. I just want to pull in and see if we have, um, uh, see if there is any update and if there's been any draws. August the 5th, nope, no draw. So the last draw we had was CEC only at 3,000 and there hasn't been a draw yet. All right, let's keep zipping through here. So Vishvesh, in your situation, hang tight. And uh, as far as updates, yeah, the like the really, until you get your acknowledgement of receipt, there isn't really any way to, to track in a meaningful way. All right. Um, okay, this is a good one. I'll pull this up even though it's a comment and it's not a question. So Kletz is millions out of work and houses averaging 650,000 and Canada does not accept degrees from universities in other countries. I know of a heart surgeon working in the hospital as a janitor. Yeah, Cled, there is unfairness that exists in every country. I don't agree with your 650,000. If you're living in one of the major centers, heck yeah. 
You're going to pay a ton for your house. I have a beautiful home and I can tell you, I never paid 650000 for it because I live in Lethbridge, Alberta. And so when it comes to not accepting degrees from universities in other countries, if you get an educational credential assessment, then Canada obviously um, will give you credit for it. But every occupation is different. Every Like I take Igor, for instance, and Igor is probably not watching right now. Igor has a master's in law. Well, Igor is leaving me for a year to go and complete um, a, a, a postgraduate diploma through University of Calgary in law so that he can basically get um, uh, fill in the gaps so that he can practice as a lawyer. So that's a sacrifice he's making. Boy, the, the cost of that tuition is not, it, it's not low, it's expensive. Um, but he's making that sacrifice to do one more year, then he's going to come back and join me as an articling student and become an, become an immigration lawyer in Alberta. And, uh, and so, yes, uh, Clad, this is a reality. And um, it's, you know, it, it's, there is inherent unfairness in a lot of what happens. But when I look at the overall um, benefits, the overall opportunities, the overall possibilities in Canada, I can't think of another country. Well, I'm sure there are others out there that are equally as good, but that have an opportunity for people. Like I look at some of these countries where things are just horrible. You know, as a foreign national, you know, uh, who's immigrated to a country, you know, what future do you have? I look at this, uh, you know, I look at um, UAE, you know, as long as you're working, you can stay. But the moment you're not working, then you no longer have status. So the opportunities in Canada, I'm so proud of this country. And yes, there are, there are challenges. Yes, there are, are problems that exist for people. But in terms of, um, in terms of the, the, the challenges that exist for some versus others, yes, it's, it's not always equal. And, but life is unfair sometimes. Uh, but overall, so happy with this country. Okay. Um, okay, so here's another question about processing. Guys, understand processing is going to be all over the map. Even what they say as the processing times can often be a lot lower than... than um, you know, can often be, processing can be a lot higher than even what they post. So it's not surprising Saskatchewan, the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program, um, and then all of the PR applications that follow the nomination when you're filing to the IRCC. Paper-based applications have never been a priority at this stage till they get everything sorted out. They're digitizing all of those applications. They're converting them into digital files so officers can work virtually and remotely. You know, and we're still not completely out of the woods. In Alberta, things have opened up. We don't have any restrictions, um, and it's it's open. We're back to normal in Alberta, but anything can change, and so that's just a reality, unfortunately, Sophia. Okay. Um, okay. Side says, okay. I previously applied under Express Entry FSW. Inland applicant can I also apply to the graduate stream in the ONP. There's nothing stopping you. Absolutely, you can apply. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay, Pre, this is what I'm going to recommend that you, if I jump over here, book a consult to go through this in detail. As far as spouses coming on visitor visas and being a part of a permanent resident application, it just depends on the country. Some countries have um, a much more stringent approach to this. Some countries have um, problems with people who've applied for permanent residence and at the same time have uh, are, are seeking to come temporarily as visitors. So it's not... Um, yeah, so it's quite... Oh, there's my phone. <laughs> there we go. Someone is trying to call me on my phone and my phone fell off <laughs> where I've got it balanced here and uh, landed on the ground. Um, but yeah, in terms, of, um, in terms of coming as a visitor or a worker and, uh, you know, spouses as a resident in the U.S., all of these factors, we'll need, to, we, we'll need to really dive into it a lot deeper. Um, coming from the U.S., they don't tend to be as cruel, say, as if you're coming from India, but it's still a reality that some, um, you know, some visa offices take a more stringent approach. And in every case, if you've got a permanent resident application in the queue and you're seeking to come temporarily, officers are going to, they're going to factor that in. They're going to take a look at it and they're going to say, hey, we've got uh, someone who wants to come temporarily, but at the same time, they've shown an intention to reside permanently in Canada because of the permanent resident application. And so um, it's a factor that comes into play, the extent to which it does and which option is best. Um, that's something, Pri, that we'd really need to connect and, and have a consult. So just click on the link below and book a consult and let's chat about it and sort out the best strategy going forward. Okay, let's see here. Um, okay, Mohammed's asking about sponsoring right here. 
uh, parents to Canada. Well, the options are very limited. It's pretty simple, and I'll, I'll answer it pretty quick. The super visa was created for parents to come visit family, but when it comes to PR, parental sponsorship is usually the only route, but you, get, you guys can see it's a lottery, and uh, only after you've been in Canada for three years and pay taxes for three years can you even submit an expression of interest to sponsor uh, a parent from abroad. And so if you're going through that process and um, you're looking at pathways to help your parents come to live with you in Canada, it is not easy. There's probably less than 10% of the people who apply, maybe even less than that, who ultimately are able to sponsor their parent or grandparent. But, um, you know, the, we'll see what happens with the, you know, what the government does. We're in the midst of an election now. So the Liberals have announced the, um, the, the they've called an election. And so... We'll see how this all plays out with the election. Generally speaking, immigration tends to be um, pretty locked in. So it, um, you know, the the department there there aren't significant changes that occur when one party comes in versus another. There are things that happen, but generally speaking, the levels planning and things like that they they don't typically um, uh, they don't typically mess with that too much, um, at least in a super meaningful way. All right, so TRV through the super visa program, sponsorship of a parent through the parent and grandparent category after living in Canada for three years and having a minimum income level. And then the third option is if they are in Canada and things are disastrous at home. So they really don't have a, anything waiting for them at home. Maybe you have a single mother who doesn't have anyone to support them. Well, those individuals sometimes can uh, receive permanent residence through one of Canada's humanitarian and compassionate applications. So there are, there are options and there are things that, uh, that people can do when the situation for that parent is just really dire in the home country. And we call that an H&C application, but they actually have to be in Canada for that uh, application to be submitted. Okay, here's an interesting question. Sean Song says, does the Mormon church pay for the mission? So the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is, has also been known historically as the Mormon church. And the answer is no. Um, there are, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. In some circumstances, they do uh, help to cover uh, the costs of missionaries going out um, from some places where they just don't have resources to do it. But those funds come from the donation of members. Um, and so uh, the, the, you know, when I pay my tithing, um, which is I pay 10% of my income uh, to, to the church. And uh, through those funds, um, there's also sections where I can contribute to the missions of other young people, which I do in addition to my own children. And, uh, but my kids, my son and my daughter who served, uh, they worked they worked hard and saved the money, which was, you know, you can live pretty cheap as a missionary. So it was, right now it's about $10,000 that the, that the kids um, uh, will save um, and, uh, for their missions. And then no matter if you're going to, you know, if you're going to India to serve a mission or if you're going to uh, Tokyo, Japan, you know, the, the cost of those missions is vastly different. And so they just charge 10000 for each um, each missionary. And as a parent, um, you know, I encourage my kids to save their own money because when you work hard to save your own money, it just means that much more to you. Um, and my son Connor right now is not with us here in Lake Louise because he is working and uh, he's a lifeguard right now. So he's, he had to work this week. All right. It's a little bit of a tangent, but this is why I do this. I want people to know who I am and why I do what I do and why I'm just so much different than everybody out there. Um, you know, my faith, my, my, my belief in, in, in God and Jesus Christ is, is what drives everything that I do. And uh, I would not be who I am today if it wasn't for that. Okay. Um, <laughs> you're very welcome, Noor. <laughs> okay. And that's totally fine, Sean. You, it, these questions are open. It, it doesn't matter. You can ask any questions that you want. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, Amir says, I'm studying French to get CLB4. Meanwhile, I'm hoping which uh, we will have a cap increase in stream B. Um, what do you think? Will they open? I'll be honest, if you're talking about the TR to PR pathway, if you're talking about the PNPs, um, we just don't know what things, what, what's going to happen. 
I think the tier-to-peer -peer pathway, it's unlikely that they're going to open it up um, for essential workers or for international grads again. Um, at least that's in my mind. I think they've got a lot of candidates that they're working through the, the process now. They've got a lot of people from overseas that technically now, if you get your confirmation of permanent residence, no matter where you live in Canada, you can travel and you can come and you can land. So those restrictions aren't there. So IRCC, I think now is starting to fill in the quotas so that they have enough um, you know, enough spots to, you know, to try to meet the, uh, not the, the, uh, annual levels planning. Um, but <laughs> there's a lot of you. And so they're really working hard to get people through. And I, I don't know if they would do massive draws like they did in the past. I think things are starting to settle down a little bit more. Okay. Let's see here. We'll just skip to the next question. Um, <laughs> neutral. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Yes. So Kled, I know you're, you're really stuck on this stuff and you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, an engineer who has to work building maintenance and can afford to live average wage is really $15 an hour. Um, the minimum wage, uh, in, in many provinces is $15 an hour. But I think if you go back and you look at my YouTube channel, one of the things that I shared was um, uh, was companies like Windmill Micro Lending, who offer micro loans to people like your friend who's working building maintenance, um, if they want to go back to school, challenge their engineering, try to get their engineering degree, uh, there are micro loans of up to $15,000 that are available to people for a fraction of the interest they would normally pay on a loan to help them. And there are tools and there are resources out there. And yes, in some professions, it's hard to break in. But think broadly, and I, I think about this too, are there other areas that maybe he's not able to, you know, practice as an engineer, um, but he has other um, other pr professions that maybe he takes a one-year program that he could use all that experience to then springboard him to something else. And so there are a lot of resources out there as well. But yes, for some people, it, it it's not just smooth sailing. It is hard work. And uh, they can't always practice in the profession that they we're hoping or they practice in before they came to Canada. Okay. Um, okay. Shri says, can you add a spouse onto your PR application while it's processing after EAPR? Does this result in both spouses getting a PR together? Thank you so much for your help. Yes, absolutely. You can Shri. If you get married after you submitted your EAPR, if you um, were married before you filed your EAPR and you listed your spouse as non-accompanying and now you want them to be accompanying, then if it's express entry, they will reassess your score. So they will reassess your comprehensive ranking system score to see if you still are above that round of invitation level where you got that ITA. And if you add a spouse or and, and um, you change your spouse from non-accompanying to accompanying, then understand what's going to happen is they're going to reassess it. And if you fall below your PR application could be denied. But if you got, if you just got married, then you absolutely can add them in and uh, it takes a long time. So it can add in up to six months or longer to add them in. Um, but you can do it if you get married after you submit your EAPR. And if you have any questions, Shri, same thing as always, just go over to our site or click below and uh, book a consult and I can walk you through the whole process. I can explain exactly what immigration wants uh, to collect and even to help you with timing and how you strategize the best way of doing it. So don't hesitate to reach, reach out and book a consult. I'd love to help you with that, Shri. Okay. Um, Yes, Niraj, you're the same as many people with the TR to PR pathway. Um, as far as acknowledgements of receipts for international grads, it's just taking time. Be patient, my friend, be patient. Um, okay. And Mohammed says, how much the fee for a consultation? You guys can go over there and you can see all of the fees and everything are posted. The, the consultation, I charge um, $300 for a 25-minute consult. But trust me, there's a roadmap that's sent out. You provide the information in advance. And when you book that consult, I'm ready to go right from the get-go. And uh, in that 25 minutes, I can save you more time and hassle and pain and suffering uh, by giving you the answers that you need that relate specifically to your situation. And uh, you fill in the form. I'm able to review it. I'm be able to understand the facts, so no wasted time. Whereas maybe you book an hour consult with someone else and you spend the first 20 minutes answering questions about your background. Well, this is all hyper, hyper focused and it's designed to give you exactly what you need. And um, 
yeah, so don't hesitate to slide over there and book a consult. Um, and myself or, or Susan or Alicia, we would be delighted to, to help you. And uh, just, you know, make sure that you're not running into any roadblocks that, uh, that can be prevented. Okay. Um, okay, CD says my score is 470 or FSW draws worth the wait. Well, of course, what are you going to do otherwise? You know, we're hoping that those draws will open up and then you'll be able to do that again. But realistically speaking... What's the alternative? Are you just going to say, no, I'm not going to do it? Um, you know, I think eventually, I think it will settle back down to 470. Um, but I think the initial draws are going to be closer to 480 just because of the competition and how long it's been since they've done an open draw. But yes, yes, I believe it is worth it. And if your IELTS are expiring, then you may have to rewrite it. But, um, but no, I would, I, would, I would proceed forward. I think the lowest score we ever had was 468 um, in the, in the modern, modern era of express entry. And so if I think if you're below 468, then you're probably looking at the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program or other provinces to pull you out. Um, but there's no harm in keeping that profile in there. Okay. Um, okay, B. Rich says, has, has RCC started issuing uh, passport requests for FSWs Outland? Yes, in some countries. And that's the way I'll kind of answer that one. In some countries, the answer is yes, they have. Others, um, because of a vari variety of reasons, it has been a lot slower uptake. Um, okay, so we got a lot of questions attached. This is also one of those uh, ones I'll ring the triangle. Applying for CEC, it doesn't um, show my uh, police certificate option what should i do how about intended occupation in lima oh got a lot going on there my friend i suggest you book a, a consultation um when you're submitting your profile remember and this is where the course this is why the actual course that i have um, created for you guys it answers all of these questions when it comes to um uh, when it comes to the the express entry process and i've got over 52 individual lessons all geared towards uh, this uh, the, helping you to avoid all of the issues that people commonly face um, when they're applying through express entry and it goes through everything that you could imagine and so i highly recommend that you guys get over there and uh, and subscribe for the next master class it's going to be awesome um, but in the case of what you're talking about here it looks to me like you're filing a profile possibly and if that's the case um, then um, there are certain questions that are only come up or, or certain documents that are uh, required or requested after you get your ITA. Maybe it is that you have an ITA. Um, if your PCC option isn't showing, then maybe you haven't lived in that country for at least six months in a row since you turned 18. Maybe the country, um, well, if, if it's Canada, you're not required to submit it, but there's a lot going on there, Hitesh. So yeah, I recommend that you book a consult. Okay. Um, all right, let's see what else we have here. Okay, let's just keep moving on here. There's a bunch of questions, a bunch of comments here that I'm kind of reading through that uh, I'm just trying to find the right one here. Um, uh, here's a good question. Pavneet says, should the NOC great job duties exactly match the job description on the NOC website or less can work as well? The standard is a substantial number of those main duties. I typically go with about 75%. Um, once you've got kind of in that range, you're okay. No, you do not have to have them all. And absolutely, you do not want to just copy them exactly as they're worded in the, um, in the duty section uh, within the NOC profile so you do not want to do that you want to do it as if just like the company would normally describe the position in their own words and then those need to be substantially the same as uh, the duties that are in um, in the knock and a substantial number of those duties which I would you know I would probably classify it as about 75 percent you know give or take it just depends on the actual knock if you need any help with that this is something that we do in consults all the time Pavneet Okay, let's see what else we have here. Okay, so here's a question. Uh, this one um, is from Monsi. I'm waiting for the AOR and TR to PR. Can I go to India and come back in between? I highly recommend that people just don't leave. That's my position, okay? And the reason that I do that is because so many people book consults with me after they have left, and then they find out for whatever reason, through no fault of their own, 
um, circumstances outside of their control that they can't come back. And then with the TR to PR pathway, remember you have to be in Canada when the application is finalized in order to get it approved. And if you leave, you expose yourself to the possibility that you can't return. And remember in India, you know, the, 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 the pain and suffering that people have had over the last number of months because Canada just barred any flights from India. And I had a consult with someone who tried to go to Mexico and then fly to Canada and Air Canada wouldn't let them board. So yeah, I would highly, highly advise just not to go back until you get your PR approved. And I know there's reasons and factors. If you have complications, Monsi, then please book a consult and we can talk about it in more detail. But the only advice I can give you now is not to leave. Okay, Isab, do I think normal processing of FSW for outlanders will resume shortly? Yes, we're starting to see some movement in some countries. And my, my expectation is that yes, the answer is it will start to move forward. And uh, you're, you're very, very welcome for the dedication. Okay, excuse me. Um, all right, let's see what else we have here. Trying to think. I've got a little bit of a duplication here showing up in my feed here. So I'm trying to find some new ones um, so that I can get as many people's questions answered as possible. Okay, Simran, this is a little bit more detailed, but let's see if we can tackle it. So an express entry, if we have work experience with the same company, but broken into five months at once and then no work because of COVID uh, for a year, then eight months continuous. If I say it's my current job, it gives me points for two years. Okay, you have to separate those out and put those into two separate um, entries in your express entry. Otherwise, it will give you credit for that whole month. So you need to put the first five months and then, um, the, and then the second eight months as, uh, as two distinct entries, and then it will properly calculate your points. Remember for CEC, the work history that you're claiming for eligibility needs to be within the past three years. We'll see, Cassava, if there's gonna be a draw today. Um, I was just going in and I took a quick look to see if there was any, any changes, and it's likely that we will have another draw, but uh, you know whether or not immigration is, is going to do that, I've been, uh, Let's, let's refresh the page here and see if there's been any change since we've started. Uh, let's see here. Any updates? Nope, we're still here. So no draw yet. No draw yet. Okay. Um, okay, well, I'll pull up Marcella. Pull up there. Okay. Yes, we're going to enjoy our hike here. We're going to be leaving in just a little bit. Okay, so Marcel is one of the expired copers. All right. Haven't heard anything from IRCC. Am I allowed to visit my family in Canada if the travel restrictions fall for vaccinated people, even though my copers expired? Are there any other implications? Thank you. Marcel, this is definitely a consult, my friend. Um, you know, when it comes, I don't know what country you're coming from. Um, I don't know if you have, uh, you know, TRVs. When it comes to an expired coper, that's not permanent residence. So you still have to, if you're from a country that doesn't require a visa, you still have to have an ETA. If you come from a country that requires a visa, then you still have to obtain that. And, um, and irrespective of the COPER, you know, obviously that's creating complications, but you can't travel on that expired COPER. So I recommend that you book a, a consult. Um, no updates on the borders opening, Joe. We're business as usual. We're hoping that it's going to happen. We haven't seen anything to indicate that it's not going to happen. Okay. Um, all right. So Sean says most financial institutions don't provide personalized letters for proof of settlement funds requirements. What would be the best approach to get the exact number of six months average balance? Well, the reality is sometimes you just can't, like you said. And in fact, many banks just say, we don't care what immigration wants. We're not going to give you the letter um, because if we don't have, we have a policy of, of not doing that. So you take whatever you can get, Sean, from, from the bank, whatever they can give you, uh, you take it. And then when it comes to the six months, then take six months of bank statements and submit those in lieu of the average balance. Okay. And if you do that, you're not going to have a problem. All right. And that's just another little tip that comes straight from my Express Entry DIY course. Um, <clears throat> Zainab, when it comes to study permits, my heart goes out to all of you. It has been just a horrible, horrible situation uh, for many international students who were caught in the pandemic, who who trusted immigration, who submitted applications, and now we're seeing uh, applications getting rejected, which is just horrible, awful. And um, I think it's really disingenuous for immigration to have done that. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see class action lawsuits against the government for those purposes. In your case, Zainab, 
I don't care when you, you know, PR is different, but for study permits, if you're not getting anything, there's no responses, um, then there's nothing stopping you from requesting the GCMS notes, especially if you're trying to start school in September um, and you don't have your approvals yet and everything is, is just up in the air. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't hesitate to, to, to go ahead and, and, uh, and make that request. Oh, Abdul here. Hello, Abdul. Good to see you. He said, what's up? I'm also outside, man, taking my Tim Hortons double double. <laughs> That's awesome. Good for you. Okay. Um, okay. Yomi says, can I apply for a visitor visa at the moment from Nigeria? Well, there's nothing stopping you from submitting it, right? But ultimately, um, the finalization and the issuance of, of visas are really determinant upon the travel restrictions lifting. Okay, Zainab says, what is a startup visa? Well, um, a startup visa is, is typically associated with PR and companies who, um, uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a pathway for entrepreneurial uh, individuals to set up companies and get a visa uh, for permanent residence based on, you know, the, whether it looks like that plan's going to be good. Oh, it's nice. The sun is coming out a little bit here. This is awesome. Wow, this is going to be an expensive little hit on my... <laughs> <laughs> on my data but it's working well so we'll just keep rolling with it here okay um all right so muhammad says what if someone mistakenly entered the wrong birthday in the express entry profile do they need to create a new profile can immigration officers see the previous entered birthday in the profile if it's only a profile you should be able to go back and change it and i have in my course if you go back there and you, you register for the course, you will see that there is a way that you can modify family information and you can go back and make any changes that you need to the birthday before the EAPR is submitted. So there's no problems. You can go in and you can correct that. It is possible. All right, you're very welcome, Zell. All right, let's see here. Um, okay, Rishi's also asking for processing. Well, it's happening just because, well, that's the way the government is. Some people's applications are moving faster than others, and I don't have a, an exact reason why yours isn't. But I want you guys, I want to put a few things into context. Before Express Entry was created, and I've talked about this in the past, the Federal Skilled Worker Program and the CEC were really the only games in town. If you're outside of Canada going through the Federal Skilled Worker Program, in some countries there were backlogs for processing of up to six or seven years. Okay, that's why they created Express Entry. And so when I see people who are frustrated because their application, there hasn't been updates in, in 25 days, um, understand the world that we came from was like many countries. You know, how long does it take to get PR in the U.S. if you're an H-1B from India? I don't know. What? You're probably dead by the time it's approved. Well, for Canada, we have a, we've really created a situation where the expectations are off the charts, right? Processing happens so very, very fast. Um, and so for some people, it, yes, it will take a little bit longer, but Rushi, um, really, really consider yourself super fortunate to be in. There are so many people that just weren't able to get into the tier to peer pathway or weren't able to um, qualify for an ITA through express entry. And so I always count the positives. And yes, it'd be great for everything to finalize really fast for you, Rishi, but it's just going to take a little bit longer. Okay. Um, Amna, absolutely. I hope you can appreciate that I help people all over the world. That's why I created a cloud-based firm. So I don't have a physical office. So whether you live in Lethbridge, whether you live in Lake Louise right here, whether you live in Chandigarh or whether you live in, you know, Nairobi or Toronto, it makes no difference. We work with everyone. The whole firm is set up to be able to work with people right in their own home. So you don't have to travel anywhere. There's no parking problems. There's no challenges. And we're even able to facilitate um, uh, appointments a whole lot easier than, than many, many places. Okay, let's see here if there's any other ones. We're just about done, guys. Um, okay, and people like Raja here who asks the question, is there any way to come and live in Canada? This is where I will absolutely want you to click uh, on the link below and book a consult and we can walk through all of that, Raja. Okay, many people are asking the, that same question and if I skip through, that's why. That answer for Raja is for all of you as well. 
that's what I love to do as an immigration lawyer, a Canadian immigration lawyer, is to work one on one with you to help you devise a strategy for Im immigrating to Canada. And sometimes I'll book a consult and I'll give you the realities and I'll say, look, my friend, it's probably unlikely you're going to be able to come. So don't waste any more time or energy and consider other options. And uh, sometimes those are the questions and the advice that I give clients. Um, <laughs> I choked. <laughs> Thank you. Three cheers. Well, three cheers to all of you as well, because this whole live stream would be nothing if it wasn't for all of you amazing people. Okay. Um, let's see what else is here. Okay. Lucy says, I applied for the tier to peer pathway and RCC requested me to provide an RCMP check. But when I logged in my GC key account today, I noticed that the uploading RCMP section disappear. Did they cancel my RCMP request? No, there's problems with this portal. It's a disaster. If you guys could see how frequently we communicate with the head immigration officials talking about portal problems, like we're literally in the process of creating a separate coordinator position within the Canadian Bar Association's immigration section um, to deal with portal issues. And it's a new position we're starting here in September. We've already got an awesome person identified to do it. And so, um, yeah, we're really, really excited about uh, getting someone whose sole purpose is to navigate the, this awful portal situation. So what you're going to do is if the portal spot is gone, you're going to upload through the web form and you're going to tell them the portal spot is gone. Um, but I recommend that you log out, log back in, and maybe it will magically appear again, which sometimes it does. But if you're running out of time, you know you're hitting a deadline, Lucy, submit it through the web form if you're having any doubt and just explain the situation and you will be fine. Okay. Um, okay, I'll answer this one from today. He says, can anyone go for a business post-grad certificate in a college program after having a master's in engineering? It depends. There's no rule that says you can't. But when immigration is deciding whether or not to issue a study permit, that is a factor they look at. And the sole purpose, remember, anytime you're applying for a study permit, the goal behind that study is to, dis to demonstrate to immigration how you're not going to use it as a pathway to PR, which is like crazy because that's really some of our best PR candidates are students. But what you're trying to do is to convince IRCC genuinely that this education is going to help improve your job prospects in your home country. And so there's a lot of factors. I know there's no hard and fast rule, but does immigration often take that into consideration and list that as one of the reasons for refusal? Yes, they do when compounded with some of the other factors. And so to get a study permit these days, the re approval rates, I think, are almost down to 40%. So more people are getting their applications refused than getting approved. Okay, let's just see here. Um, okay, I think, do you know what, guys? We're just about done. Sukrit says, working for the U.S.-based company, am I eligible for CEC as long as I have employment letter and pay stubs? Address on my pay stubs is U.S., but address on, address on my pay stub is U.S., but address on pay stub is Canadian. I don't know, um, you have to be living and working in Canada to get points for the CEC. Um, if you're in Canada and you're working for a US-based company, um, um, it really comes down to the domicile of the company. So if the work that you're doing is really for the Canadian entity, um, or there's a connection, a sufficient nexus to it, then you may be able to claim that. But if it's purely you're parked in Canada working for a US company, and there isn't a real nexus between the work benefiting something in Canada, it's unlikely you're going to be able to claim that as a Canadian experience class. Okay. Um, let's see what else we have here. <laughs> Anushka, this is something I can't answer. We applied for the PR on a new PR application portal. Is it authorized and safe and will it work? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I have to assume that that's the case. In fact, tomorrow I have, um, I have a technical briefing with IRCC on the new representative interface with the PR portal. Now the PR portal looks pretty robust. The new one seems like it's going to work. And so I can't see any reason why it wouldn't. Um, the government is relying on it as the main and only pretty much source for submitting your, your PR applications now for many of the categories. So I think you can probably trust that. 
All right, a couple more questions. Um, let's just see here. Okay, Hong says, for FSW, can I start using the balance mentioned in the proof of funds after I submit all documents to the IRCC? Canada is in the federal election period. Will it affect E in the long run? So we already talked about that a little bit earlier, the, the fact that you know elections don't have super, super profound impacts immediately on immigration. Yes, changes do occur over the, the coming years, um, but usually it's a gradual kind of evolution based on the, the focus of that political party. Uh, but when it comes to proof of funds... Um, uh, yeah, you know, ultimately, what is the source of it? Is it funds that you've earned from your own income? Then that's really what immigration is looking for. They want to make sure that it's not a loan, okay? All right, guys, I think we have reached the end. Um, I'm very curious to see how much this is costing me, given the fact I'm using data to stream this live stream. But hey, you guys are worth it. Remember, as I talked about before, we've got a couple things that I want to close off with. One is that I absolutely want you guys to go over here. I'll change my screen and register for the Express Entry Step-by-Step -step course. This course will help you to avoid all of the main problems that people have when they're going through this process. And on top of all of the videos associated with this DIY course, um, starting on, and the date is listed right here, September the 13th, I will be doing um, a one hour Q&A only for the people who subscribe on September the 13th for a week, five consecutive days where I, you have a chance to come in and get all of your questions answered. And so I absolutely, absolutely love uh, doing these uh, Express Entry live Q&As. Um, but this right here, uh, this Express Entry DIY course, that's, that's where I can really dive in and get in at into a level of explaining that I can never do in these live Q&A sessions. All right, and if any of you were not able to get your, your questions answered, slide over here to our new website, speak to a lawyer, and this is where you can book a consult to get all of your questions answered. All right, okay, this is, I guess, the end of the line. Thank you everyone for tuning in. It was great to have you. And um, maybe next week I will be broadcasting from a different location. So we'll see. All right. Take care, everyone. It was great to have you and uh, enjoy your week. And uh, the only thing I guess I'll point out is one of the things that I've been doing a lot over the last little stretch here is trying to get out into the mountains doing what I love more than anything, and that is fishing. So those of you who are watching on YouTube, I want you to slide over here and I'm going to I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to show you, I think already on the YouTube channel. Oh, let's see here. Um, I think I've got to type it in manually here because I'm not logged in. <laughs> let's see if we can find the, let's see if we can find it here. And I'm going to shift and I'm going to share my screen with you guys as we wrap this up because I want to share this with you. So here's the live stream. Hey, that's kind of neat. We're doing it in a, uh, a pretty cool place. Waving to some friends here who are taking off, who were out visiting from Ontario. Well, friends I met here at the, at the inn. But right here, massive trout <laughs> in a tiny creek. I had so much fun filming this. Um, it was just, oh, if, if I could do that every day, that's what I would be doing. So go check that video out. It is hilarious. And once again, all of these things um, are just all ways for me to open up and let you know who I am. Um, I'm Mark Holthy, a Canadian immigration lawyer, a, f a former ex-immigration officer, and apparently now a, a YouTuber who loves to teach people about immigration. Take care and stay tuned in September because things are going to go crazy as I release a ton more videos. I did a, another uh, immigration, um, a wild tip on immigration I recorded up here and it's just wonderful. All right, I better get going if I'm going to get my family up to that that uh, that trailhead to, to do another awesome hike. Take care everyone. Have a wonderful week.